Hi, it's the Great Panzini. I'm back. I'm back with a Dan Electro. Uh, I forget what they call it. An, an, an NOS, new old stock. Uh, M 59M or an M59? I don't remember. This is why you got to have. Um, why well, you gotta have, keep the tags on them right there that's the reason I bought this some years back it's been sitting around I was gonna originally buy it I saw Jimmy Vivino uh, up in uh, at a, a festival and uh, with Al Cooper and he used it for slide and when I got a glimpse of his it, he had the action well above the fretboard yet he was able to that's the difference. He's a pro, man. He was able to actually form chords and do slide work and everything like that. And he thought it was like one of the best little things there was for slide work. Uh, and I, I think he used open tuning, although my memory doesn't go back that far. It's called New Old Stock NOS because, um, um, because supposedly they found a warehouse with a whole bunch of these lipstick pickups in it that they were able to use that were like 15 years old. So uh, they they came out with these, the thing I read said 2014. I would have guessed I bought it before that. That's only six years ago. I would have guessed I bought it before that, but I, I could be wrong. Um, and uh, anyway, so they used all those old pickups. Uh, they didn't know how to remake them or something. Another thing I read at a later point was that they found the diagram on how to make them and so they started reissuing them. The new ones have new old stock plus. They're they're called NOS plus, and uh, a slightly different pickup. Some of them come with sparkle finishes. The make on this, it's very. I mean, one thing I saw said it was made out of spruce with a plastic covering, but everybody seems fairly uh, uniform in reporting that it's kind of a a uh, masonite particle board kind of material. In heavy, in a heavy plastic shield, <laughs> if you will, and, and so it's really interesting uh, how they're made. And I know they were made in the old days with that, uh, with a, with like a masonite kind of stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so it's got the lipstick pickups. It's got two, two. Um, I'll get in here and get a picture so we can see that. It's got two volumes and two tones, and they're just the reverse of what I would think. I would think that the, uh, I'll put it in the bridge position here. I would think that that larger outer white knob was the volume. But in fact, that's the tone. And the outer orange one is the volume. And the interesting thing about these is that they get gummed up right from the get-go and you turn that tone down and the volume knob goes along for the ride. And sometimes you turn the volume knob down. In fact, on the bridge one, it does it with both. Yeah, either way, you turn the volume or the tone, the other one goes along for the ride. So you have to be uh, real careful and tune, tune one down and then it would be really almost impossible to do it on the flight. I might just need some uh, cleaning, some zero residue. Uh, and on the neck pickup it does the same thing. If you turn the volume down, the tone knob goes down with it. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe it's by design. I don't know. I doubt it. Now there's things I read that say that they're hollow, semi-hollows. And another one said they're chambered. It doesn't state one way or the other if they are. Uh, for years people have talked about them being chambered. Maybe. When you tap on it like that, you really can't tell. It sounds like you're hitting against something very solid. Uh, so if it is, my guess is it's maybe minimally changed. Certainly down where the controls are, it's chambered and the pickups uh, are routed out the middle. So... And the information I have is off the old one. It's a 25 inch scale. And I would not have thought that. I would have thought it was like a, a 14 inch scale. I mean, it, it feels so small and so tiny uh, that, um, you know, 25 inch scale, that's what the Paul Reed Smith, what my SEs are, and I love that. On this, it just feels really small. And then I realize 
Well, it says it's 1.65 millimeters at the nut. I guess. I, it just seems so small from top to bottom. And it says it's a C profile, but it seems to me to be what others call a modified C. It's kind of a flattened C. It's very... seems small to me. and it, But it's nice. It, I mean, it fits in the hand really nice. It's a 12 inch radius is what I found on um, looking at it, which surprised me because usually when we get into the larger radiuses, I don't, I have trouble forming chords. But because this neck is so small, even with a 12 inch radius, I do pretty good with my old hands. It works pretty good. So, um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know how chambered it is. I, I'm guessing it is some, but uh, you, you can't tell by knocking. But when you hear that tone, the tone is just amazing to me. I think as soon as I heard it, I thought of a Telecaster wide open on the bridge pickup. You know, it's that sharp, and pretty soon you notice that your ears are bleeding. Uh, but, uh, and it's got a little of that in the middle position, though. having a whammy bar. I'm guessing that uh, aluminum nut maybe also gives it some more extra spank. And in the, uh, so I did the middle, I'll do the middle again here. The middle just sounds great to me. If you can play folky stuff on it, that's pretty good. That's amazing to me. Um, so now in the neck position, it... I could do a jazz gig with this thing. It's got a little of the... Uh, with those single coil lipstick pickups, it's got a little bit of a Fender vibe. Kind of. So much for forming chords. some trucks outside. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Sounds wonderful. Now on those control knobs, th those are just uh, weird because if I tune, put it in the middle position and I want to tune, turn the volume down on the neck pickup and let the bridge pickup come through. A little. It's moved the tone down as well. So I really got to go over here. I got to hold that volume knob and turn the tone back up. And I just want a little of the neck with the full tone. So I got to take, it's a two handed operation. And it pretty much came that way brand new when I bought it. So um, uh, it uh, immediately started doing that. It comes with this strip of 100%, uh, I'm not sure what it is, like Naga Hide kind of. Um, uh, shelving material <laughs> from uh, from Home Depot <laughs> and you could you know I mean the stuff it's trying to come off already uh, it, you know it's six years old but and that stuff does get dried out and it cracks if you look at the really old Dan Electros from the 60s a lot of them are missing chunks on that I don't see why you couldn't go down to your uh, local cabinet shop and buy some material with a color of your choice or a print pattern of your choice it would be pretty easy to replace it because it's really just a sticky back stuff that you put on there and um, this looks like a 100% pure leatherette 100% pure naga hide or something like that this is called the seal 
pick guard. They, a lot of people refer to that. The headstock is the Coca-Cola headstock, even though it's not quite. And this they call the seal because it looks kind of like a seal or a porpoise or something like that. They call it a seal though. So anyway, so that's that's about it for this. sit around I've had to tune it about two or three times this morning it has kind of like um, I don't know what you'd call those kind of like Cluson knockoffs is it a knockoff it doesn't have any name on it any brand name this is made in Korea by the way uh, and um, I don't know it's just there it they work and they tune up and within a few minutes <laughs> I'll be just a pinch off on a couple of strings. So, I, and I don't know what to make of that. Old strings, these are the original strings. Me, I probably explains a lot of it. Wow, it's a cool. I always wanted a Dan Electro. I wanted one of those longhorn basses, just like Jesse Colin Young had. And uh, I never got one. So these are up in the mid to high fours now. 450 499 something like that when I bought this it was 369 which felt like a good deal uh, you know I would I, I would think this would be competing against uh, some of the low-end Gretches uh, probably in the Gretches maybe for less money uh, so I, I would want to look at those all uh, especially with this the volume and the tuners all being stacked like that, all on one thing. Oh, now there, see, I, I thought I turned the volume up, but the tone didn't come up with it in the neck. And the tone controls aren't all that work useful. So that time I turned the tone down, shut it off, and the volume only came back part way, not all the way. So it gets very muddy very quick. As soon as we hit it, very much like the Jazz Master I did last a couple weeks ago. Well, by the time you see this, it'll be a couple weeks. It, on zero, it's pretty muddy on the neck position. On one, it opens up and it's trebly. And there's no change all the way up. So it's just zero and one is, so I can do the wah-wah. Although it didn't. Wow, well, it doesn't. Yeah, it's on or off. And let's just check that neck. Or the bridge, rather. Ah! There we go. Very little. You need to get some zero residue in in there. Yeah, the volume came all the way. Same thing on the uh, neck position. You just turn that tone knob up from zero to one and all the treble kicks in and that's where it stays. It's just got a 60s vibe and I like it. Although I think it sounds better in the middle. It's a cool guitar and a fun guitar. Oh, the back of it here, uh, four bolts to, to, to bolt the neck on. Really lightweight, really, really lightweight. Uh, so another suspicion that it maybe is in fact chambered. Um, four screws back here. I'm guessing if you wanted to take the pickups out, you would use those screws to do that. I think the primary purpose is to adjust the, adjust the height of the pickups maybe. Uh, but I don't know how that would work. I mean, if you wanted to 
change them and you unscrewed those little screws, would they be sticking out? What happens? Do they stay in? I haven't messed with it, so I don't want to know. It's got one of those bridges uh, yeah, wrap around. Um, a wrap around kind of bridge, adjustable though. Adjustomatic? Trumatic? <laughs> Allmatic? I can never remember the names. But individual saddles, you can adjust it up and down, back and forth, uh, forward and backwards. So, um, yeah, I'm looking at that and not having ever replaced the strings on this. Man alive. The string heads, it's a wraparound because the string heads go in from the front of the bridge and then it wraps around over the top that way. But you're not going to get that string inside that little hole. You're going to have to raise the pickup up just a pinch. I think. Oh, I do wish I had an old string around with a ball end that I could see if it would fit in there. I don't think it will, but it might. I don't know. But um, so anyway, it's a Dan Electro M NOS 59M. Uh, the new ones are a little more. They have more upgraded pickups. They're not the original pickups, and they also come in silver spark sparkle and stuff or uh, gold sparkle, orange sparkle. All sorts of stuff like that. I think you can get the no sparkle thing for a little bit less though too. So it's a cool guitar worth having and I think it's just kind of neat what it does. So anyway that's it. That's a quick uh, overview. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Uh, uh, off one website it says the top material is made out of hardboard. <laughs> I thought that was good but it also claimed the body material was spruce. Well it's spruce particle board or masonite or something like that I don't I don't know um, but uh, 25 inch scale 1.65 at the nut I think it came with 10 gauge strings these feel like tens Let's get you out of here. If you want, you can subscribe down below, hit the bell icon, give a thumbs up, give a thumbs down. But do leave a note if you ever think about getting an uh, inexpensive, cheesy guitar just for fun, uh, or if you have done that in the past, or if you owned an original. I know a couple of guys out there that had, I think, uh, one of their original basses, which is kind of, I, I always came very close so many times to buying uh, one of their baritones, one of their little baritones, which is, I think what Glenn Campbell used actually in Wichita Lineman. Or he used a bass six, I don't remember now, but he used, uh, well live he used a uh, Dan Electro baritone. I remember that, I remember seeing him play that. So um, anyway, got any questions, I'll try to answer them, but I think you now know what I know. So until next time, until we meet again, stay safe out there and uh, have a good day, have a good week. Thanks, bye.